Adult Protective Services report received on a 70-year-old female. The report alleges the client is physically and mentally disabled. Her diagnosis includes swelling of the legs to the point that she can barely walk, excessive weight loss, hypertension, and early onset of dementia. The client received Social Security of $789 a month and $300 in VA benefits. She is refusing medical help. EMS was called to the home and she declined treatment. Her fear is that if she goes to the hospital, they are going to amputate her leg. There is concern also that the adult is having some intermittent memory loss. Hello? Ma'am, can I come in? Yeah, come in. Social services. Yep, my name's Roger. I'm a social worker for the Department of Social Services. I wanted to see if I could speak to you a little bit today. Uh, what do you want? Well, we received an adult protective service report um, that had some concerns about your physical and mental health, as well as you not receiving the medical attention that you may need. That's true. I didn't want to go to the doctor, but my daughter talked me into it. I went late last night when I was in pain. Well, some of the concerns that we have is that your legs are very swollen, that it's difficult for you to walk, that you've lost a lot of weight lately. And that they have refused, and that you refused to go to the doctor, but you're saying you did go to the doctor. Is that correct? I ended up going late last night. Yeah. Okay. I'm definitely glad you made that choice. Um, how do you feel now? I feel a little better now. I have a follow-up appointment with Dr. Smith on Thursday. I don't think I'm going to go though. I'm I'm feeling better. The doctor gave me enough medicines for ten days, and that should last me until my follow-up appointment, if I end up going. Well, Ms. Quinn, you should really think about going to the doctor to get a good checkup. If the emergency room doctor stated that you should follow up with your primary, um, there's probably a need. Um, I'll give you some, uh, I will give you someone to go to if you don't feel better and the problems continue. I'll think about it. Are you eating? I might eat a few crackers, drink some water, but I don't really have much of an appetite. Well, Ms. Quinn, you really should try to eat more to get the nourishment that your body needs. Um, we don't, lose, we don't want you losing any more weight. Um, that'll help your legs get a lot better. If you say so. Ms. Queen, have you noticed any signs of memory loss, like forgetting where you put things or forgetting names of your family members? What? Just because a person forgets to pay a bill every now and then and then asks the same question over and over doesn't mean you have memory loss. As Queenie's mental and physical health continue to decline, Miss Queenie was seen wandering down the street in the cold at 2 a.m. with only a thin nightgown on and no shoes. Sarah, the daughter of Mrs. Queenie, has since moved in and has assumed the day-to-day -day responsibilities of Miss Queenie. Since Sarah moved in, some concerns regarding the care of Mrs. Queenie have surfaced regarding this doctor's appointments and medication issues relating to Sarah only getting refills on the pain medications and not the others. Come in. Good morning. My name is Roger. I'm a social worker for the Department of Social Services. Can I steal a few minutes of you guys' time for that? Sure. Um, I'm here because someone had some concerns about your mother, about your mother wandering um, out of the home, doctor's appointments being missed, and prescription medication not being filled properly. Can you tell me a little about that? Well. I did have to cancel an appointment because my car broke down and, and I didn't have any other way to get there. When she missed her appointment, her prescription had run out and the pharmacy wouldn't refill it. I've been so busy taking care of Mama, I, I just I haven't had time to follow up with the doctor. I really don't see where the medication is helping her anyway. Has there been any incidents of um, Miss Queenie wandering out of the home? Well, you know, she did a couple of times, but she, she didn't get far. Um, one of the neighbors saw her and brought her back home, and but but that was before I moved in with her. Since I've been here, she's only wandered, you know, kind of wandered once. But that was when I had some friends over. Do you have any kind of alarms in the doors that let you know if she's trying to leave? Oh no, no, I can't afford any kind of fancy security system. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some programs available that can help caregivers with respite and transportation services that I would like to tell you about. There's also some inexpensive alarms you can buy from a home improvement store. Let me explain how they work. Caretaker leaves the room and the social worker has a private conversation with Queenie. 
who is only aware of herself. Queenie was not able to answer any questions about medications or appointments, but did say, Sarah takes good care of me. Social worker followed up with the doctor and pharmacy, and Queenie has not had prescriptions filled in over four months, nor has seen the doctor in over 10 months. There have been interviews with neighbors who expressed concerns that Ms. Queenie was seen outside in different states of undressed, confused, wandering in the street without any safety awareness. Ms. Queenie was finally placed in a memory care unit by her doctor after the department expressed safety concerns that Mrs. Queenie would receive better care at the memory care unit. After being placed in the memory care unit for the last two years, Queenie's son, Sam, moved back to town and decided to remove her against medical advice back to her residence. It appears that Sam is not providing adequate care for Queenie. He works during the day and leaves her home alone. He has not taken her to see a doctor since she left the facility and has cut off ties with other family members and he has isolated her. Additionally, he has been convicted of some drug related charges. You stay here. Hello? Hello? Hey sir, my name's um, Roger. I'm a social worker for the Department of Social Services. Can I steal a little bit of your time? Just a moment. I, I guess it's, I guess you can, I mean, what do you want? What? Yeah. What? what is it? Well, you want to take a seat for a second? I guess I could. Well, we've received a report regarding your mother. What kind of report? I don't think she really wants to talk to anybody today. Well, I can't necessarily tell you who made the report, but I can tell you it does express a lot of concerns regarding her care. <laughs> Well, you know that was Sarah. I mean, that's that's my sister. She's not good for nothing. Thank you. Well, I really do need to speak to her, and and if she tells me she doesn't want to talk, that's that's yeah. Fine. I mean, she's she's fine. She's fine. I I, I take good care of her. You, I, I'm her POA. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't have to let you see her at all. As a matter of fact. Well, a power of attorney does allow you to make some decisions for that person, but it's then basically kind of giving you that permission to blah Just, blah blah. <laughs> She still has the ability to make those decisions herself, and I do really need to see her. And see well, her. let me tell you what all I did for her. What is it? I bathe her. I cook for her. I mean, you know she has dementia, so I mean, I have to do most everything for her. As a matter of fact, I, I mean, she can't do anything for herself. Well, that's good to hear that she has someone helping her, but I really do still have to see her as a part of our responsibilities. Well, like I said earlier, she doesn't really want to see you. As a matter of fact, I mean, she doesn't really want to see anybody. Absolutely. And she won't know if she does see people. Well, with Adult Protective Services, the assessment itself is not voluntary. If I can't speak to her, I'll have to call law enforcement, and they'll have to come and allow me the opportunity to speak to her and see her to ensure her safety. Even okay. though she has dementia, she won't know anything you say, and you say you still have to see her. I do. Well, I guess for a minute, but I'm very busy. Is she in the other room? She's in there in her bedroom. Can, can we go? Can you show me? I guess. Social worker walks into the home and finds Queenie restrained in a wheelchair with bruises on her arms and legs, and she appears disheveled and there's a strong odor of urine and feces. She cannot speak to the social worker and appears very confused and disoriented. Roger, this is Miss Queenie. That's my mama. Let me ask you two questions. Who takes care of her during the day and why is she restrained? Well, I mean, I do have to work during the day, so I mean, I keep her restrained some, you know, to her chair because I mean, she wonders a lot. Like I said earlier, she's got dementia. I don't want her, look, look, Roger, I don't want her to get out of the house and get hurt or, or anything like that. I mean, this is my queenie. When was the last time she saw a doctor? I mean, it's been a while. I mean, I don't like doctors. I mean, I know she doesn't like doctors. Well, we're going to call 911 at this juncture and have them come out and assess her. 911? Well, I hardly think that's necessary. That's definitely 
your right to have that type of feeling, but at this juncture, I'm going to call 911 and have her checked out. Um, she doesn't look good, and I cannot leave her until I know she's okay. Oh, okay. 